Do you want lasting deliverance from sin? That may sound strange to you, but it's not. It's what God does. He takes sin out of our life. What is that? That's a better relationship with God. Sin hinders our relationship with God. And we need to have that relationship as well good as he wants it to be. I am fully convinced that without the fear of God, we cannot experience lasting deliverance from sin. The Lord, through Jeremiah, tells us, I will put my fear in your hearts that they shall not depart from me. Jeremiah 32, 4. God is telling us, in essence, I am going to do marvelous things in and through you. I will send my very own Holy Spirit to you, and He will abide in you and give you a new heart. He will empower you to mortify all deeds of the flesh. And he will guide you into total freedom from sin's power. I believe it. Finally, he will cause you to will and to do his own good pleasure. There is one work that the Holy Spirit must perform in you and me. He must put in us a holy fear considering sin. Then we won't depart from his commands unless you have his fear in you, your sin, will always lead you away from him. The Holy Spirit changes the way we look at our sin. He knows that as long as we continue to take our sins lightly, we will never be set free. So he shows us how deeply sin grieves him and provokes God's wrath. How does the Holy Spirit do this? If you are sick of your sin and you hunger to walk in righteousness, then be prepared. God is going to shoot gospel arrows of conviction into your heart. These arrows will sink, seek out every hidden area of your heart exposing every sin and once they hit their mark they will feel their you will feel their flames of truth burning deep into your conscience many flesh driven christians try to shake off the com the conviction of sin that god's convicting arrows produce if you continue to sin you are walking in the flesh the conviction of sin that we experience under the Holy Spirit's conviction is actually a work of God's grace. It is meant to expose the deceitfulness of sin in us. We should ask God's Spirit to continually load up our conscience with the awful sense of the ways you and I grieve the Holy Spirit until our sinfulness is completely exposed. The fear of God includes a full understanding of danger and consequences of sin. Many Christians are not aware of the terrible danger they are in when they continue on in sin. Only the Holy Spirit's flaming arrows of truth can awaken our souls to the godly fear we need to shake off sin. The psalmist writes the following about one of God's prime covenant promises. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then I will visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness 
will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Psalms 89, 30 through 34. We rejoice as we read this wonderful new covenant word. God promises never to remove his loving kindness from us, no matter how badly we may fall. Yet, many believers skip lightly over the heavy warning in this verse. If we forsake God's law and refuse to keep his commands, he will visit our transgressions with his divine rod. There simply isn't any way to soften this word. God is telling us plainly, if you continue in your sin, I will deal with it. I will pardon you and forgive you, but I will take vengeance on your sin. The Bible tells us that whomever the Lord loves, he chastens. We see this truth illustrated vividly, vividly in David's life. Consider how the Lord dealt with this man, a faithful servant who enjoyed God's favor at one point in his life, David sinned awfully, justifying it and keeping it hidden for months on end. And finally God said, enough. And he sent a prophet to expose David's sin. Nathan used an analogy to tear apart every excuse David had until finally the king admitted, I have sinned. I am guilty. But simply admitting sin is not enough. God not only exposed David, he also laid his divine rod across his servant's back. Of course, we know the Lord always applies his rod in love, but David's life clearly shows us that feeling God's rod of correction is no light thing. The stripes it causes are painful and agonizing, and often the rod falls not only on us, but on our loved ones and those near us as well. Consider the direct results of David's sin on those around him. The illegitimate baby he sired with Bathsheba died. Thousands of Israelite soldiers were killed in battle. He brought scandal to his country, making Israel a laughingstock in the eyes of its enemies. And as if that weren't enough, David endured endless personal pain because of his sin. David knew all of this could have been avoided. Even every painful event was an agonizing reminder of the consequences of his sin. If you continue in sin, you will experience a constant drain of God's peace and his strength. David wrote, My strength faileth because of my iniquity, and my bones are consumed. Psalm 31:10. Like a hole in the oil tank of a car. Your sin will slowly drain you of all resources. All peace, strength, and joy will drip away until they are gone completely. David confessed, Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sins. My body has become weak because of what I've done. My iniquity simply won't allow me to rest. David was experiencing God's piercing arrows. He wrote, Thine arrows stick fast in me, and my hand, thy hand presseth me sore. Psalms 38, 2. Yes, this beloved servant was being taught the fear of God, and part of this painful lesson was that he had lost the peace of the Lord, now he cried out. He weakened my strength. Psalms 102, 23. 
It doesn't matter who you are. If you harbor a secret sin, you will experience continual disturbances in your life, your home, your family, your work. Everything you touch will be out of kilter. You will become increasingly restless, confused, tossed about by endless worries and fears, and all of your peace and strength will be drained from you. If you continue in sin, you will lose your usefulness. Oh my goodness, I want to repeat that. If you continue in sin, you will lose your usefulness to God's kingdom. Through the years we have seen folks who were mightily used by the Lord, who were later put on the shelf by God. The Lord simply told them, I am sorry, I love you so much, I forgive you, and my mercy will come through for you. But the sad thing is, I just can't use you. To us, this is one of the most awful things imaginable, yet it happened to King Saul. The Bible tells us, Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commands of the Lord thy God, which he commanded you. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. 2 Samuel 13, 13 and 14. What awful words God told the king. Saul, you could have had my blessing in your life continually. I was on the verge of establishing your kingdom in Israel forever. I had great plans to use you mightily, but you wouldn't deal with your sin. Instead, you became even more bitter and hard-hearted. So now I am through with you. Immediately, God's spirit left the king, and in that moment, Saul was no longer of use to the kingdom. From that point forward, everything Saul did was in the flesh. That is where it all ends. When you and I continue on in sin, you become absolutely barren and fruitless and of absolutely no use to God's kingdom. There is good news for you. Is the Lord dealing with your sin right now? Has he shot arrows of conviction into your heart, causing you to feel his grief over your sin? Don't be afraid. That is the gift of God. He is planting his divine power in you, teaching you only through my holy fear will you depart from your sin?